me see. Okay, perfect. It should should be recording. All right. So the name of our umbrella company is Wealth Legacy Group, and I think I talked to a few of you guys about it. But we have the umbrella company. Over the umbrella company, umbrella marketing company, then we have our four divisions. Okay, we have real estate, uh, mortgages, life insurance, and investments. And the real estate brokerage in the in the real estate division is Superior Properties Group. But I want to go over Wealth Legacy Group so you can see what we educate and teach and what we talk to clients. And then obviously whatever the client needs at that point, then we recommend them to, in our case, our brokerage, which is our Superior Properties Group. Make sense? Yep. Okay, perfect. Mm -hmm. So let's go ahead and get started. So Wealth Legacy Group, we have, we have a few different signature proprietary system programs. So one of them is a leads program. So the reason we don't put logos like the real estate logo and stuff on here is because we actually have the ability to go to real estate offices and life insurance offices and mortgage offices and actually provide leads because a lot of them don't, don't have leads. So that's something powerful that bring, we bring to the table. Okay. Next one is a rewards point system. So we actually have an incredible point system that we're able to pay people. And we'll talk about that. And then we have a separate uh, compensation, a stipend compensation program for the market associates that basically another word for stipend is a monthly allowance or a salary. It's pretty much the same type of thing. Okay. So we'll go over that. A little bit, a little bit about me. I'm the founder and CEO of Wealth Legacy Group. And then I'm also the real estate broker of record on the brokerage side. And I've been licensed for about 15 years now in real estate. I'm also licensed as a mortgage loan originator. I'm licensed as a life accidental and health. Um, and um, I'm also a licensed notary public. Okay. The one I've probably been in longer is actually notary. I became a notary like a year before I became life, uh, I'm sorry, real estate license. Okay. So is that a pretty good amount of uh, experience right there? Mm -hmm. okay. Yes. Cool. <laughs> Just to show you, like, if you guys have any real estate questions or anything, hopefully I'll be able to answer. If not, I'm, not, I'm, I'm the kind of guy, if I don't know the answer, I'll tell you, you know, and I'll say, let me get that answer for you. So that's hopefully something good, you know. Yes, sir. Another thing, <clears throat> and I've talked to a couple of you guys about it. Real estate has been able to, you know, because it's so flexible and it's a big amount of money at once. Um, I've been able to literally work for six months and take off a few months. You know, not because I'm lazy, although I am, but, you know, because we can, okay? And I've gotten able to meet some cool people while I'm traveling, and these are the people down here. Tony Robbins. Now, has anybody uh, ever heard of Tony Robbins before? Mm, no. Yes. Yeah, I have. Really? I have. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, look up Tony Robbins. He's an amazing, motivational, inspirational speaker, um, and he's literally spoken in front of thousands of people at a time. Last uh, thing I went to was in Phoenix, Arizona. He was speaking in front of like uh, 15,000 people. So he's a big, big speaker. A lot of people know him. He's an author. He's written multiple books and he's been in the business for a really long time as far as motivation and inspirational goes. Yeah. So I highly recommend, you know, uh, looking into him if you haven't. Okay. Uh, next one, Lisa Nichols. She's been in, in different books. And one of the main ones that people know of is The Secret. Have you guys ever heard of The Secret? Law of Attraction, all that stuff. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. She, actually, yeah. She, she was actually on Oprah and Dr. Phil as well. So, you know, just look her up, Lisa Nichols, Dr. Phil, and you'll see some of her footage. Okay. And then mm -hmm. Eric Thomas. So I've met some cool people over the years. Uh, now, I've already asked all of you guys this question. And I always ask clients because I want to see where they, where they want to be and pretty much where their mindset is, is where do you want to be in five years? But also, what do you want to have? And is what you're doing today going to get you there? Okay. Um, especially because in, in our career, I like to think, you know, there's different ways of getting from point A from point B, like a GPS, right? But if you're going to take a car compared to a plane, right? Or a bicycle, uh, real estate is basically like the plane. <laughs> you can get there a lot faster. Okay. <clears throat> the cool thing about what we do um, is with that, you have, you know, the amounts of money where you can go travel, have a better car, you know, have a bigger house. Is that pretty cool? Absolutely. All right. Now let's talk about retirement. This is the reason that what makes us different from other 
realtors. They don't really talk about retirement at all, first of all. Uh, but also it ties together everything that, that we're going to talk about, okay? And gets our clients to think a lot different, okay? So let's talk about retirement for, for a few minutes. This, these are stats from the Social Security Department and the U.S. Census, okay? And this is what happened from age 18 to 65. They followed a bunch of people. And these are the stats that came out, okay? And they change, you know, they, they do these stats and they change, you know, very slightly, like every couple of years, but it's pretty much the same thing. Um, they found out that 63% were dependent, you know, so they were dependent on Social Security. They were dependent on their kids. Uh, they were dependent on other family members. Um, in fact, there's this funny joke in the Hispanic community that that's why we have so many kids. So that way one or two can become successful. And we, they can take care of us. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right. It's okay to laugh guys. <laughs> it's a funny little joke. Okay. <clears throat> uh, next one, 25% are still working. So you've probably seen people like a Starbucks or Walmart, you know, the older people that are like greeters. So let me ask you, do you think they want to be there or do they kind of have to be there to go because they're doing paycheck to paycheck? They have to be there. The answer is, yeah, of course. I mean, if, I, if I'm 65, 70, I'd rather be on the beach or, or with family or at least in front of the TV, right? So, <laughs> so more than likely, they don't want to be there. Okay, Even if it's just to make a little bit extra money, um, I mean, that's like, I wouldn't want to make that type of extra money where I'm there all day, right? So more than likely they're there because they don't want to be there. Okay. They have to, uh, 7% are deceased. So they've already passed away. It's hard to help them at that point. Right. Uh, 4% are financially comfortable. So maybe they were making good money, setting money aside and they have enough to retire. No problem. Okay. And maybe they left enough for their heirs. And then the last one is 1%. Okay. Uh, the 1% is the people where they have enough money where they can leave to their kids or kids, kids, and they're completely good. Make sense. <laughs> in fact they say the one percent of wealthy control 95 you know percent of the wealth okay what i want to do in this presentation is talk about what the wealthy do okay so that way we can start following along and doing some of the things that they do but at the end of the day 95 percent fail to plan and five percent planned retirement okay and the sooner that you think about retirement the easier it is okay in fact this pretty much proves it right here okay Let's just say you have a few years, you know, in this case, 30 years, and I'm gonna grab my annotation to make it easier, okay? Um, you, have, you have some years to set aside for your money to grow, in this case, 30 years. And let's say you got either a savings account or, or some sort of investment account, okay? And let's just say that you set aside a thousand bucks and you contributed, contributed $250 a month for 30 years. Make sense so far? Yep. Okay. Yeah. And, and this, you know, maybe you had it in some sort of a mutual fund or something because the bank only gives us like 0.001%. You guys know that, right? They pretty much give us no money. <laughs> so don't put all your money in the bank. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so this one, the annual growth rate is 5%. So when you do the math uh, at simple interest in 30 years, you will have $212,000. Were you guys following along? Yeah. Yes. Yes. All right, so let me ask you guys, if you were in this situation, you save for 30 years and this is your retirement, do you think you can retire on, on the 212,000? No. Okay, no. exactly, the, Maria said it right. Uh, no, it's literally not enough money. Um, and here's, here's the proof, okay? This is what people don't think about, the adjusted cost of living with inflation. So in the future, everything's gonna get more expensive, okay? And that's what people don't think about. So let's just say your expenses right now is $5,000 a month and rate of inflation on, gen, you know, on average, it's about 3%. By the way, don't believe me on these numbers. Go, you know, do your research and go online and you can see that everything is, that I'm telling you is the truth, okay? Don't just believe what somebody's saying. <laughs> In, you know, in general, okay? <laughs> so 3%, same thing, 30 years. So in, in 30 years, the same lifestyle that you're living right now is going to literally cost three times the amount of money, okay? So in this case, it's $12,000. So with the adjusted cost of living, now it's going to cost $145,000 to live the same life, okay? And we're not even including healthcare because that gets more expensive when, we, when we're older and, and all that stuff. So when you add that all up, Okay, if you've saved up uh, 212 and your expenses are now 145, guess what? Your money's only gonna last not even two years in this case. 
Is that pretty crazy or what? Mm -hmm. okay. Now you're kind of seeing, I'm going to show you three different reasons why people are in that situation, but this is the main one. And by the way, this is, this is one that somebody actually thought about it, retiring and set money aside. That's the crazy part about this. Okay. And why this is so important that we're going over is because even the people that are thinking about it, they're going to end up in the situation. So we really have to educate them on how really money works because the way people think money works is not it. Okay. In fact, money is not money anymore. I don't know if you guys know this, but money is actually currency now. Money uh, back then, you know, back when we were in the gold standard, it was backed by gold, backed by silver. So it made sense to put it in the bank, put it in the mattress, right? And mm -hmm. Christopher's, you know, uh, putting his head up and down because he's heard probably from bigger pockets some of these oh, yeah. things. I heard it all. <laughs> <laughs> so, so now currency, literally the government, you know, let me ask you guys, can the government print as much money as they want? Of course, mm -hmm. you know, they've been doing that this whole time through the stimulus check, everything that's going on with the pandemic. So let me ask you, every time they print money, what's happening to our dollars in our pockets? It's going down in value, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's another thing that's hidden, you know, why inflation is, is what it is, okay? So basically, cost of living is going up over time. We already know that. Uh, hopefully, while we're working, we're making more and more money, okay? But what happens is... <coughs> At retirement, I mean, hopefully we get some sort of state pension or social security, but normally there's still some sort of income gap, okay? That's why people need to, you know, get money from the government or, or their kids. And on average, it's about $2,500 to fill that gap. Okay, are you guys following along so far? Yeah. Let me, by the yeah. way, let me, know, let me know if I'm going too fast or anything because I'm used to going through this. <laughs> so mm -hmm. if you guys are like, wait, that doesn't make sense. Or, you know, just let me know. And there's only a few of us anyway. Okay. Or put in the chat box and I'll be able to answer. Okay. But so far you guys get it. Okay. Um, I already talked about this. The dollar is going down in value. Um, anytime there's a war, anytime there's a depression crash, in this case, because of the pandemic, they're, they're printing money for the stimulus and like the, the, the bailouts. And so it might not affect us today, but it starts affecting us and you'll see everything get more and more expensive for that reason, okay? Mm -hmm. Another thing is taxes, okay? This, I would say, is the hugest thing a lot of people don't think about, okay? But I want you to understand back when, like in the 1930s, back then there was no such thing as a 401k and all that stuff, right? Back then there was a pension where you worked for a company um, and then at retirement, they would take care of, of you for the rest of your life. Do you guys remember that or at least heard of it? Yep. The pension? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, then what, what they did with the government and these corporations, they said, hey, here's this 401k. Instead of having the pension uh, do matches and do this, and it's a tax write-off for the, for the corp, right? So it makes sense. And <laughs> they can stop paying, you know, at retirement, they take care of their own retirement. So it was an awesome thing for the corporations. I want you to understand. On the taxes, you'll understand why it makes a ton of sense because the government's going to get paid way more, right, compared to a pension because the corp is just paying the pension to the people. Uh, you're going to see in a second why the government loves 401ks because they get, they get to make so much money. But for us, you know, that have like, let's say a 401k, it was a big ripoff. But the way they told us is this, okay? That's why I want to I show you this stats. Back then, there was a big war. I think, I don't know if it was in World War II or somewhere around there, but there was high taxes, okay? So then the government and these corporations said, hey, look, uh, how about we do this? We, we take out of your paycheck pre-tax, we'll do company matches, three, 6%, um, and then you get to control your retirement. And guess what? You're not paying taxes now, you're gonna pay taxes when you retire. So taxes are high right now, so it should be cheaper later, okay? Here's where you sign up, and they signed up. Now, doesn't that sound good? So mm -hmm. the way I explain it, doesn't it sound good for people? Mm -hmm. Yes, it does. No, okay. Mm -hmm. But let me tell you why it's a super ripoff, okay? They ripped us off. And I simplify everything, guys, because I really want you guys to understand it, especially if you guys come aboard and you're talking to clients about these things, I want you to sound smart. And the easiest way to sound smart is to simplify it for them. Make sense? Yes. So, so I'm kind of showing, I don't know if you guys noticed, but I'm simplifying, I'm showing you stats and I'm going to go over like stories. So you guys really comprehend it. Okay. I want you guys to literally be the top one to 5% in the industry. Okay. Absolutely. You guys will notice from this. Okay. By the way, Maria, your license, have you seen any of this stuff yet? Anywhere else? Oh yeah. Okay. All right. 
with your brokerage, do they teach you how to, how to show this to clients though? No, just on my background is in accounting and I, I used to uh, handle the 401 case for my- uh, oh, Yeah, I forgot. <laughs> Shoot, I'm, I have an expert on, on this thing. I forgot. I'm not an expert. Don't say <laughs> that. Right, cool. Well, maybe afterwards we can talk a little bit. Where, you know, you can kind of tell us uh, what your experience is on all this. Okay? But, oh, thank you. So let me know if, if I'm right or wrong on any of this. Okay, Maria? No, but, you're right on. Okay. So on all of this, I totally forgot as far as Maria. <laughs> it's like having like an FBA, FBI like on, on the call, you know? It's like, I'm oh, watching shoot. your earnings. <laughs> all right. <laughs> no, you're good. Thank you. Yeah, so let much. me ask you guys, Christopher, Nancy, you know, Luis, Maria, um, <laughs> if you had a farm, okay, and you you have to pay taxes to the government, would you rather pay on the seed? Okay, in this case, it's like 35% to the government, right? Would you rather pay on the seed or the harvest of your farm? Mm, depends. The seed? I don't know. Nancy, what do you think? um there's no right or wrong so you guys know i'm not really sure in the seeds maybe in the seeds okay mm -hmm. christopher why do you say it depends uh need to know more numbers like if it's 35 cents to the dollar for like what the seeds are for like okay how do i say like yeah, the look, look if you're I mean, a farmer crops you you uh planting and stuff like that you know yeah, I mean, if, if you're a farmer, would you rather pay the government now in the seeds before you farm and then the rest of it is all yours? You don't have to pay the government because you've already paid them. Or would you rather not pay the government, plant the seeds, grow it, and then pay them later? Once you have the whole harvest, now you have to pay 35% of the harvest. Well, well, okay, let me ask you this. Are, we, are you asking, do I want to pay 35% of the cost of what it costs me for those seeds or 35% of the cost of when I sell the harvest, what that harvest is going to get me. Yeah. Because it, it's a proportion, if it's 35% of what, it's, what the seeds cost, the seeds are going to cost less. But if you're asking about just 35% overall, then it might be 35% either way, depending on how they're going to ration it out and proportion it out and all that kind of stuff. No, it's on the cost. Uh, if it's on the cost, if it's on the cost of the seeds, it's better to do it on the seeds. Only reason being, if you if the seeds cost you a hundred thousand, you pay thirty five percent on that. Let's say there's thirty five thousand, whatever. If you buy the seeds for that hundred thousand, like I said, you pay the tax. If after that it comes out to being four hundred thousand, what you're gonna harvest out of it, then it's gonna be thirty five percent of that four hundred thousand. You're looking at one hundred forty thousand. Exactly. So <laughs> I mean, now you that know. you're putting numbers to it, it makes sense. But simplify it. Would you rather pay thirty five percent on this or thirty five percent of this entire thing? Okay, the right answer was Nancy. She might have guessed, I don't know. <laughs> but I'd rather pay on this because it's way less, you know? I mean, think about an apple tree, right? You plant an apple tree from one little seed and you're gonna grow how many apples and how many apples is that seed's gonna, so you start multiplying, right? So I'd rather pay the government on the small portion unless you love the government, you wanna pay them on more, but it's better to pay, pay on the seeds. Make sense? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Normally I don't spend that, that much time on that one, but, but hopefully you guys understand. <clears throat> so what we do is that's one part of the education another one is this one okay their property you know if you ask them if it's an asset or liability most people think of their house as an asset okay which makes sense they can sell it later make some money they can it goes to their heirs you know beneficiaries it's great but i love the definition that robert kiyosaki says he's a multi-billionaire he invests you know so much money into real estate and Be other careful, types of, of business but he says this okay this is the, the definition he has, Nancy and Christopher and everybody. Whether you're working or not, if something is putting money into your pocket every single month, it's an asset. If it's taking money out of your pocket every single month, then it's a liability. Now, isn't that an easy definition? Yep. Now, if we move that definition to somebody's property, if they have to live in it and pay for it, then it's a negative cash flow, which means it is a liability. Make sense? Yep. At the same time, if they were to move out and rent it out and they have some cash flow, that can turn into an asset. So that's that's the way we teach it. So nothing wrong with the house and we can show them how to make money with it. But I, I want to give them that definition so that way they can start having a mindset of a business owner or a real estate investor and really think like a wealthy person, you know? 
Uh, most people don't have life insurance. Their debt is passed on to their heirs. And then if they don't have their stuff situated, then it goes through probate court. Then a judge says yes or no on everything. And then they have to get paid. So a lot of money goes to, <laughs> to attorneys and probate and all that stuff if they don't have their stuff done right. So what we do is we sit down with clients and we go over some of these incredible strategies like tax-free retirement strategies, uh, real estate strategies for wealth creation, business strategies, asset protection strategies, because if we help them grow all this and you get sued, that can all be wiped out, right? Pretty much overnight. And so asset protection strategies so they can protect their wealth. And then no market exposure strategies where you're neither in the stock market in the real estate market. So it doesn't matter what's going on out there. Make sense? Mm -hmm. now, now, is that pretty powerful so far? Absolutely. Okay. So you guys are already starting to, starting to see how much we're different from other realtors and other, other companies, hopefully. <clears throat> so let's go over the first strategy, okay? I, own, I, own, I go mainly over two strategies because there's so many out there. Everything else depends on the client. So then we sit down, we say, hey, this is what I think we should do. This is why and all those things. And you'll learn as, as we go on in trainings if you join us, okay? So tax-free retirement strategy utilizing insurance policies, okay? A lot of people don't teach it this way. Even life insurance agents don't, don't normally teach it this way, okay? Mm -hmm. Let's go back to the example of the farm, right? Th these are numbers that, that coincide with it. So remember the harvest? Let's just say the harvest is 450000 okay? Just put real numbers. So let's just say, you know, Christopher worked his whole life, and then boom, at 65 years old, he has 450000 Not bad, right? Not too, not too bad. Okay? Not bad, right? Um, he has maybe a 401k uh, from a private company, the trucking company, like we were talking about, Christopher. Or 403b. All these, by the way, all these um, are different tax codes. So 403b is for like nonprofit or, or like school teacher. ESA is government. IRA is like self-employed people. Yeah, is that right, Maria, since you're working on this? Or you've worked on this? Let me know if I'm wrong on this, okay, Maria? But basically, those are the tax codes. Um, and so... What they don't think about those is they haven't paid the government yet, remember? So after tax, we got to pay Uncle Sam, okay? So after we pay Uncle Sam, we're left with 65%, okay? So now uh, we keep 300000 We have to pay, a hundred, in this case, $150,000 to the government. Everybody follow me so far? Yep. Okay? Mm -hmm. All right. So pretty much once you have that money in retirement, you're 65 years old, there's, there's three main things that people do. It's this one, this one, and this one, okay? One, two, and three. Now, if I had to put a number, like a percentage to it, this is pretty much what 95% of people do, okay? And again, Maria's on here. Um, let me know if I'm wrong, but most people just spend it, <laughs> right? You yeah. have retirement money and they just leave, you know, put it on the bank and just spend it slowly. And what happens is in this case, let's say, you know, they're spending 30,000 a year. They have 300,000. It's easy math, right? Their money's only going to last 10 years. Okay. I don't know why it says 15 years. It's about 10 years or less. Make sense? Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, if you knew you were going to die within 10 years, I guess it's okay. But who knows how long you're going to live, right? The longer you live, that's why people are being, are scared. What if your money runs out in retirement? That's like one of the like number one scares in retirement. I don't know if you guys know that. Okay. All right. Number two, an annuity. Now, who on here knows uh, what an annuity is? Uh, I forget. Nobody? Okay. Well, this is going to be a good one for you guys then. So an annuity is all it is, is like a retirement bucket where people can put their money in. Um, and what's cool about it is it literally makes four to about, you know, 10% from the S&P 500. Okay. Yeah. And um, the thing about the annuity is they put a cap on it uh, as how much you can pull money out in retirement. So, and in, in right now it's 4% distribution. So, but, so that's the bad part. That's the most you can take out. But the good thing is if you're making 4%, you know, without risk, but you're making four and you can, you're taking out four, technically you're never touching the principal. You see that? Cause you're living mm -hmm. off of interest in retirement. So technically in theory, your money will last forever. That's the good thing about it. Does that make sense? Yep. Mm -hmm. So 4% distribution, that's 12,000 a year, a thousand a month, which is good. But the problem is if somebody needed $2,500 a month, do you see how there's still a gap? Mm -hmm. right. Okay. So that's that one. <coughs> the third one is a rental house, okay, property. 
Now I love real estate and, and, you know, there's so many benefits to it. And we're going to talk about it once we get to the real estate part of this. But uh, in this case, let me tell you why it does not make sense. Okay. In this case, you're 65, you're at the end of your life pretty much as far as, far as your career. Um, and, and this is assuming somebody grabs the whole 300,000 and buys a rental house because they want income from it. Right. So they buy a house, they don't have a mortgage on it because they paid it. Um, and then they rent it out for $1,500. Are you guys following mm -hmm. along? Yep. So, but here's, here's the problem. Okay. To the IRS. And I, I'm sure Maria can answer this question too, or say if I'm right or wrong, but, but this is called ordinary income now, because <laughs> now you have ordinary income coming in. Okay. So it's not really 1500 bucks. You got to pay the IRS again, even at retirement. So now instead of 1500, you drop it down to $1,200 on top of that. We have to pay property taxes with real estate. So property taxes gets paid to like, uh, the fire department and like the local schools and things like that. So now you drop it down from 1200 down to a thousand. So now you're pretty much at the same position as the annuity. Make sense. Yeah. So real estate makes way more sense. Like, uh, Christopher, Nancy, like all of us were a little younger. If we put tenants in it, they'll pay off the mortgage. That makes more sense. Cause now you're leveraging money. Mm -hmm. Like if this person bought with the 300,000, they, they paid for 10 properties and they put, 30,000 down, that makes a little bit more sense, but they're already older. They don't have, you know, they didn't use the power of leverage in real estate. That was the problem with this one. Okay. Mm -hmm. with this example. All right. Um, all right. Last one. This is the one that pretty much beats everything in retirement. Okay. <clears throat> and it says uncle Ronnie, because Ronald Reagan is the president that brought this one, one into law. Um, it's tax free and the 1% utilize it, the wealthy. And the tax code is 7702. So you can look it up, do your research on it if you'd like. But if you, you were to use uh, strategically the 300,000 and, and put it into this, you can distribute yourself 10%. In this case, $2,500. And it'll, it'll be just like an annuity where it'll last for the rest of your life. Now, isn't that way better? Yep. Okay. Now, believe it or not, not a lot of people know about this last one. Okay. Why? It's literally the government restricts us to, to advertise and life insurance companies to advertise it. And we'll talk about why. Okay. <clears throat> now, um, I don't know if you guys know, cause we have a couple of young people on here, but years ago, the only way, you know, life insurance, what it was used for is if you die. <laughs> right. So I'll give you another funny joke. Okay. And in, in the Hispanic community, cause that's what I'm in. And some of you guys are, um, some of the guys would talk to the insurance agents, right? And this is what the guy would say. Why would I get life insurance? My wife is just going to get remarried and then he's going to spend all that money. So why would I get, <laughs> pay for a life insurance policy? Isn't that pretty funny though? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but nowadays, uh, life insurance is so much more. Yes. If you die too soon, it gets paid out to, you know, husband, wife, kids kind of thing. But also if you become too ill, uh, you can actually access the money while you're alive. Okay. And then if neither of these two things happen, then while you, if you live too long, then you can start utilizing that as retirement income. Make sense. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to show you how you can utilize that while you're alive, borrow against it and buy real estate. And you can show this to clients. Okay. And get paid all the way around. All right. So quick one Oh one quick, like 30 seconds, one Oh one on life insurance. There's only two types. Okay. There's only term and permanent. Okay. Term life insurance is for a certain amount of time. Makes sense, right? So it might be 10 years, um, 15, 20, 25, 30, right? And think about it kind of like renting a house. Okay, while you're renting, once you leave, can you take anything with you? No, right? Any appreciation, anything of the house was never yours. So term life insurance, the way it's set up, which is why it's so cheap, is if you pass away within that time frame, then the company, the insurance company will pay you out or your, your family. If not, then it was cheap, <laughs> you know, like for me, I have, I have a quarter of a million dollars for 20 bucks. I mean, is that pretty cheap? That's Absolutely. like a, that's like a Starbucks drink, you know? Yeah. So, so that's why this is term is more popular for like people with lower income for that reason. Okay. Cause literally overnight, if they were to pass away, their family gets like a good amount of money. Right. Mm -hmm. And it was cheap enough to have, uh, but permanent life is what, is what um, the big one is. It's like owning a house. Okay. It's, it's designed to, to be for the rest of your life. But the big thing is it accumulates cash value, just like your property does like equity. 
and you can utilize this to retire and you can access it anytime. Huge. A lot of people don't, don't, aren't explained it this, you know, explained it this way. Okay. So this is the strategy that that's utilized in, you know, with this life insurance policy, it's called the IUL. Okay. It's called indexing. Okay. Has anybody ever heard of indexing? No. All of this is brand new to all you guys then, huh? <laughs> Are you guys taking good notes? Cause I'm going over like a lot of information. I know. No, I've heard of it. S&P 500. <clears throat> what was that? I've heard, I've heard of all of Basically, all stuff we're talking about. Okay, good. Well, I'm going to explain a little different, so hopefully you learn something, okay? Yep. All right, so S&P 500 is the top 500 companies, okay? It's like when you invest, instead of a stock like with Disney, and that goes up and down, when you invest in the top 500 companies, it's an average with the 500, okay? Mm -hmm. So that's normally what like um, 401ks invest in. But the problem is, uh, this is the red one, okay? This is the red S&P 500. You guys see that? Yep. When it goes up, it goes up. Okay. But when it goes down, it goes down. <laughs> Makes sense. So here, yep. here's the thing. Okay. In 2000, if you were to have 136,000, it would have dropped down. Okay. And all the way till 2007, that's pretty much where, where you would get your money back. So it literally took seven years to get that money back. I can show you again. Don't believe me. Go on YouTube, look up 401k, lost money, and you'll see a ton of people. <laughs> Like look up 2020, they had like a big documentary on it, um, mm -hmm. put it on, on our website. Why? Because this is tied to the stock market. So whatever you put in it, you can gain or lose. Okay, that's the bad part. Okay. So what we do is we use an indexing strategy. Okay. So this is us. So the green, so when the market goes up, we go up. If you notice that we're not going up as high, why? Because the insurance companies have a cap and a ceiling, like a top and a bottom. So the most is about 11, you know, 10, 11, 12%. And then the bottom is about 0%. So the good thing is that we're never going to lose our money, our principal. Okay. In my opinion, that's the best thing for somebody in retirement to put their money in where they can't mm -hmm. lose it. So right here, as you can tell, when we go up with the market, we go up. Then when the market goes down, do you see how we flatline? We literally lost nothing. Then mm -hmm. when the market went up, then we went up. Then when the market went down, we flatlined. See? Then when the market went up, then we went up, right? And vice versa. So there comes a point where we're always making more money than anybody else in the market because we never lost money. Does that make sense? Yeah. So that is the best retirement uh, account that you can give somebody. So when you're talking to somebody about retirement vehicles, uh, we're going to get to the real estate part. That's even more amazing than this. But here, not losing money and your 401k that you have, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, um, do you see why? So, you know, this is a hundred times better than what you have, you know, and Maria, again, correct me if I'm wrong. Okay. Hopefully you're on there. I don't know if you were like, cause I saw a shopping cart. Maybe you're, you're at Walmart. I don't know, <laughs> but, but uh, I'd rather not have our clients lose any money. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to take it a step further. Okay. This you probably haven't seen Christopher, but I want you guys to understand this. Okay. Um, my questions when I first saw this, I was like, okay, I mean, I understand we're going to make more money, but how, right? How does this work? Like, so I can explain to clients why, how and why. So here's how I was explained to it. And I'm going to tell you in a real estate term because it makes it easier. Uh, Christopher and Nancy, let's just say Christopher has a house for sale. Nancy is buying it. Okay. Let's say Christopher has it for sale at a, for a hundred thousand and Nancy for whatever reason, doesn't qualify, but she wants that house from Christopher. So this is what you tell uh, Nancy, what you tell Christopher. Hey, I want to buy your house. Let me write this down on here so you guys can see it. Okay. I want to buy your house. I don't qualify for right now. It's worth a hundred thousand. So this is what I'll do. Okay. I'll give you a thousand dollars, non-refundable lease option money. And I want to buy your house today for a hundred thousand. Okay. We'll have a three year contract. And in three years, I should, fix my credit, do whatever needs to be fixed, and then I'll buy it. Um, so does this sound like a good good thing for you? And so Christopher would say, well, yeah, of course I get to sell it now. I don't have to market it. Um, I don't have to fix it up or anything. And I'm selling it to you for right now, even though you're not exercising until three years from now. Are you guys following along so far? Yep. Yes. So, so Christopher, for the next three years, there's really no liability because the whole time it's in his name, right? So there's no foreclosure stuff he has to go through. Nancy, here's the, the huge pros for her, okay? Nancy, uh, for three years, um, 
I mean, the property, all the equity is hers. So in three years, let's just say it goes up to $130,000. Okay. So easy math. That's $30,000 of equity. Who's, who, who does that equity belong to? Nancy, right? Yeah. Nancy three years before bought it for the hundred. Okay. So there's literally it's pros all the way around. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so in three years when Nancy says, Hey, yes, I want to buy it. Um, and it's worth 130 boom. As soon as she buys it, um, she can actually refi and pull cash out at that point at these numbers, but that she made pretty much $30,000 just because she made the decision today. Make sense. Now mm -hmm. let's go the other way around. Cause we want to, we need to talk about the negative. What if it went the, literally the other way around where now the property is worth $70,000? Um, there we go. Okay. So what would happen is Nancy would talk to Christopher three years later and say, Hey, look, I know we have a contract for a hundred thousand bucks, but, um, it's worth 70 right now. I'd rather just buy a property across the street for 70 and, and just keep the thousand dollars, the non-refundable. I mean, that's gone, but do you see how, which one's, which one's better to lose the thousand or lose, lose the 30. Right. Yeah. And so Nancy, did she lose? No, of course not. Right. Now you see translated into what the insurance companies are doing in the billions of dollars. They're never investing our principal money or, you know, 401k and all that money in it. They're just using the interest to buy options. When the market goes up, they exercise their option. When it goes down, we don't exercise the option. So do you see how it works? Mm -hmm. Yes. Right. Now, Christopher, did you ever hear it that way? Uh, I've heard similar things. Um... Like uh, your to... pockets and all that stuff. They talk about all kinds of stuff. Christopher, you're supposed to say no, or this is the first time you're awesome. Something like that. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> yeah, something like that. <laughs> all right. So just to give you a third party perspective, Palm Beach Research Group is a research company that did research on this policy. A uh, 702J retirement plan is the corporate version. So <clears throat> and you guys can look this up. Uh, this is the person that brought it in, US President Ronald Reagan. And 100% um, legal, I gotta say that, tax exempt status. In fact, this is the oldest president. He actually brought in something else that more people are, are familiar with. It's called the reverse mortgage with, with seniors, okay? Luis and Maria, have you heard of that? Yeah, I've heard of it. This. Yeah, reverse mortgages in the real estate industry, you've heard more of. But basically, just for the new people, the new, new kids on the block, <laughs> um, mm. Basically, instead of paying for the, you know paying a mortgage every month and having more equity, it's the opposite, right? Seniors, 62 and a half years old and up, qualify for it, even if they don't have a job, um, and they start getting paid from the mortgage company, and the equity starts shrinking slowly, but they now they have an, an income, right? So that's what a reverse mortgage is in real estate. So this is the same president that brought this out, um, and this one is basically like a reverse insurance policy. Some of the richest people utilize it, like Warren Buffett, Bill Gates. You guys have probably heard of this, these people, right? Um, Hillary Clinton, executives Johnson & Johnson, they literally put $23 million into the accounts. So, so wealthy people, you got to really look at why wealthy people are doing what they're doing. Is just start following what they're doing, right? Um, Jason Rink, former VP at Chase, he says this, okay? No one is telling Americans about this retirement plan. Not banks, not Wall Street, not the government. In fact, the government restricts the advertising of these retirement plans to the public. Okay. Why? Because um, that was my question. Why? Because it's completely tax free. Tax free all the way around. And how does the government get paid? From taxes. So if you tell the people how to not pay taxes, that's not going to go well with the government. That's why they restricted it from, from us, like doing it on a, on a mass scale. Does that, does that make sense? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, in the book, Tony Robbins, Master the Game, if right now we're actually listening to it. So when, if you guys join, um, I actually have that on our, um, in the back office, so you can download it and listen to it. Okay. <coughs> but on page 443, he says this, okay, it's basically a rich man's raw. There's unlimited deposit amounts with no income limitation. Maria, since she was in accounting and doing some of these things, she knows that some of them, they do have restrictions, okay? Uh, no tax when, when, um, on the growth of the investments. On anything else, like um, stocks and anything else, you gotta pay taxes on, on it every single time you basically sell. So this one, it's not. 
No tax when accessed if structured correctly, and any money left over to your heirs is not taxed. So no tax, no tax, no tax. Do you guys see how it's so powerful? So when the wealthy see this, I mean, they're thinking about this in the millions and billions of dollars. So the less that they pay the government tax, that's like the biggest uh, partner that they're going to have. So they get to save money. So they just don't tell us little people, <laughs> the poor and middle class. So now I'm sharing this opportunity so you can actually utilize some of these tax laws. Okay. I'll just skip that one. So last example, so you can, pr you can exactly see the similarity or what's going on. Okay. So this is a 401k uh, contribution schedule. Okay. You can actually pull it on my, my calculator.com if you want to. Uh, and this is for funding a 401k. And we did the numbers on $100,000 a, a year that uh, my brother actually, he's 27 years old, and see what's going on in 38 years when he's going to retire, okay? Assuming he contributes 9% of his salary, um, and then the annual interest rate that this makes is 6.9% 9, 6 .9 compounded annually. Does Are you guys following along so far? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. Okay, so the 9,000 a year doesn't change, obviously, right? And then the ending balance, because it's being compounded, this is the money where it starts growing, okay? So let's see what happens. 31 years later, he has 929,000, not bad. And 38 years later, when he's 65 years old, he has $1.5 million. You guys see that? Mm -hmm. Okay, now how, how many of you would be excited if you had that? Nobody. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> right if i gave you a 401k and put 1.5 you wouldn't be happy guys yes okay. all right nancy <laughs> said yes so she's getting all right okay so here's the thing though remember you haven't paid the government yet <laughs> all right uh 401k this this comes pre-tax out so you haven't paid the government so now we got to pay the government on this money so we actually don't have 1.5. You got to multiply it in this case by 65%. So that's the part that you're left with. So you actually have a million and 16,000. Okay. I mean, technically you're still a millionaire, right? Yeah. <clears throat> but here's the thing. If you want it to last, let's just say in this case, you put into an annuity at 4%. That means you'd be able to make 40,000 bucks a year, 3,300 bucks a month. Okay. And you're a millionaire, but you're used to making 8,000 bucks a year. And all of a sudden it drops down to 3,300 bucks. Is that a pretty big drop? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's the big problem about even a 401k, let alone the, the money that was going up and down and losing, okay? Now let me show you a better way that we show our clients, okay? So this is a life insurance policy that has all three parts, okay? Uh, the IUL, so in this case, you know, same number, same everything. So he's 27 years old, um, he doesn't smoke. We got him a $900,000 policy. So if something were to happen, his family gets 900,000, right? Um, he has living benefits. So if something were to happen while he's alive where he can get a doctor's note um, and he needs help with some things, either he's critical, chronically or ter terminal illness, then he gets 25 to 75% of the money, okay? It has nothing to do with the money that he was putting in. So those two are really good. If both of those don't happen, let's look at the retirement, okay? Uh, by the way, these are some of the things that trigger um, when they get that money. So either if he needs help dressing, eating, toileting, any of that, then he gets that money. Okay. Um, okay. Last quick quick note. Okay. Si uh, assuming he's paying six hundred bucks a month, that is seventy two hundred bucks a year that he's paying into it. Now the reason why we're using uh, the comparison with nine thousand. In the 401k, 9,000, he wasn't paying taxes, remember? So if you were to pay taxes from 9,000, then you have 7,200 bucks that you can pay into it. Make sense? Okay, I just mm -hmm. want to make sure that you guys got that. Yeah. So most important things is he's paying 7,200 bucks a year and his account right here, um, it's growing, okay? And the cool thing is you can access this money anytime you want. And here's something cool. I don't know if you know this, uh, Luis and Maria. But these type of policies, there's two ways of, of taking the money out. Either you withdraw the money or just like real estate, you can actually borrow against that money. So like, let's just say there's 34,000 bucks in your account at age 33 um, and you borrow against it. You're, you're still making interest on the 34,000 bucks, but there's a loan against it that you're paying, let's just say 2% interest on paying to yourself. 
So see how the money that you're making from the interest and the, the, the money you're paying for the loan from the interest, it's a wash. And you're making interest on the higher amount. So that just like in real estate, so it's an amazing thing that, that the wealthy utilize, okay? So let's just keep going and see what happens, okay? Um, all right, 65 years old, okay? He's been paying 7,200 a, a year into it. All together, he's paid 273,000. But look at his account, okay? There's over a million, there's one point, you know, actually there's a million fifty six thousand. So there's actually more than the 401k. On top of that, his death benefit went up. So if anything were to happen, $1.2 million. Is that pretty good? Yeah. But here's the powerful thing, okay? We can turn this thing into a pension. He's used to making 100,000 bucks a year. So we told uh, the insurance company, hey, let's start paying this guy 100,000 bucks a year for the rest of his life. Because he's used to making it. So let's see what happens. Every single year, 100,000, 100,000, 100,000, 100,000 in his 70s, in his 80s. Most guys, on average, we live to about, you know, in our late 80s normally. So in this case, it'd be $2.2 million that he's pulled out already, okay? If he went to his 80s and 90s, then he's pulled out $3.2 million, okay? And remember, he only put 273,000, okay? Mm -hmm. Power of compound interest. And then let's go to the very end. If he lived to 121, which most people don't, right? But if he did, he'd pull out $5.6 million. On top of that, because he lived so long and the power of compound in interest, his money in his account actually started growing. <laughs> so he has $3.2 million in his account and even the death benefit went up. <laughs> so he'd have $3.4 million. Is that mm -hmm. pretty good stuff? Yeah. Yes. Yes. All right, you guys sound excited. Yes. <laughs> uh, most people are shocked about some of these things because they've never heard about it. Yeah. And they start looking at life insurance a lot different because you can actually get this policy, borrow against it, bar, uh, get real estate, and start having money grow in both sides. You see that? Yeah. All right, now let's talk about real estate. But uh, do you guys have any questions so far on that strategy? Uh, no. Luis, Maria? I know Maria's on mute, but. I don't. Uh, no, I, no I think it's right very now. interesting. I'm, I'm, I'm listening. I'm following, Ernest. Okay. Is it Thank interesting? You. Is it interesting, Maria? The way we we talk about it too. It, it really is. Mm -hmm. It's because it's probably never been explained that way, right? It's not explained to the public, really. No. Exactly. Okay. Cool. I wanted to get Maria's blessing on it. <laughs> 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 All right. All right. Let's move on to real estate. Okay. This is, you know, 90% of all millionaires, they say it's created through real estate. So I think it's important, especially some of you guys, you applied for that part of it. So, uh, but now you kind of see the importance of the first part, right? So here's real estate. It's literally the opposite of what's going on with money. Okay. Why? Because of supply and demand. God only made so much land. People are making more and more babies. They're having families. They have to go somewhere. And, mm -hmm. um, there's really only three main things that we need as humans. It's food, water, and shelter. Would you agree? Yeah. And what is shelter? But real estate, <laughs> right? A house, real estate. So so we're giving people really what they need, okay? Not something what they want. We're not trying to sell them something like a car. You know how car salesmen, they go over there, they're trying to convince you and stuff. With us, what I love about our career in real estate is there's really no convincing. Um, you show them some property, whatever they fall in love with, and they can see themselves there. Um, then you give them exactly what, what they want, and they can see themselves there, right? Your job is just to show them at that point, okay? Uh, but as far as real estate over the last 100 years, it's always going up uh, money-wise, and it'll always go up the next 100 years, okay? So we're in an, an amazing industry. <laughs> I'm going to skip this, but this is the asset protection tools that we utilize. Um, the amazing thing about real estate as well is that you can never get bored, okay? Um, I don't know what, what portion, Maria, because I know she's licensed in real estate, what portion of real estate she's, she's doing, but there's a lot of different niches you can do. So you, even if you get bored in one, you can move to the next, okay? So flipping, you guys have probably seen flipping, you know, people that flip homes for, for money and stuff like that. So there's flipping, wholesaling, buy and hold cash flow. That's my favorite. And we'll talk about why. Duplexes, triplexes, fourplexes, apartments, tax liens, tax, tax deeds. So that's literally paying the county taxes to get take over property and land. Self-storage units, mobile homes, I know literally millionaires uh, that are created just through mobile homes alone. 
why it's super cheap to get into all cash flow i mean there's a lot of different reasons okay uh vacation rentals that's amazing especially once airbnb came out uh airbnb made it so much easier for short term um and so vacation rentals you're able to to literally make cash flow from that secured private lending probate um lease options we talked a quick an example uh, even on the stocks why lease options are so powerful did you guys um see how powerful lease option is I mean, mm -hmm. you can literally buy a property right now on contract in that case for a thousand bucks. I mean, that's powerful. So if you start really start combining these strategies, you know, it gets pretty big all within residential, commercial, industrial land. So you can literally start focusing on one thing and it, it becomes completely different. Um, not only is every house completely different, even literally houses and Maria, you can attest to this because she's been an Asian. Um, even if you go to the, you know, there's houses that are literally the same, same build, everything. People put in completely different kitchens, restrooms, people take care of it different. So you're never gonna deal with the same house, let alone the same person. Make sense? That's what's so cool about what we do. Just, and here's the, the awesome benefits of real estate in general, okay? I get excited about this. I don't know if you guys can tell, all right? That's why I need to calm down and drink some water. <laughs> But here's the thing, okay? I'm excited about your class. Thank you so much, Ernest. You're yeah, bringing no a lot of value. A lot of value. Thank you. Thanks, thanks. We haven't even gotten to the good part of real estate, Maria. All okay. right. Okay. <laughs> All right. It's a safer option, guys, okay? Hugely uh, safer. Why? Because you saw the stats as far as uh, what's going on with housing compared to money. Um, leveraging. If I had to choose any of these things on the wheel, leveraging is the biggest reason why I invest in real estate, Okay. Where else can you go where, let me get the screen one, where you can literally go in with three and a half percent. If you're a veteran, it's 1%. Um, you can do 5%, worst case, 10% down, but let's say three and a half percent on average, okay? And the bank is gonna give you 96 and a half percent. Have you guys ever thought about it that way? Okay, let me, let me put it to you another way, okay? Nancy, Nancy, tell me if this is a good deal, okay? I'm the bank. I want to be your partner, Nancy. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's buy this house together. You put three and a half percent down. I'll put in 96 and a half percent down. Okay. But you go on title. All right. You get to have the cash flow from it. You get to uh, air it to your heirs. You get, you'll keep the tax benefits, tax shelter. You can deduct it. Um, and just, you know what? Just pay me. In fact, pay me over the next 30, 30 years. Just pay me a payment. And the house is pretty much yours. Now, is that a good deal? Oh, uh, yeah. For sure. <laughs> it's literally the best deal. And think about it. It's not done anywhere else. If I, mm -hmm. if you ask the bank for, you know, for any type of other investment, gold, silver, business, they're never going to give you 96% of the money you need. Right? Ever. Mm -hmm. That's what, make, what makes real estate literally one of the best leveraging um, things you can do out there. Because the bank is literally willing to give that to you. You know? Mm -hmm. I'm yeah. telling you, even better, if you're a veteran, you can do 1%. Okay. There are, there are some that, that are coming out where literally it's almost zero down. It's amazing with some grant money that we can do. And so here's the amazing thing. Okay. If, if me and Nancy did that partnership, it's basically hers, <laughs> right? I'm the yeah. big. On top of that, if she puts tenants in it, she put, she gets, you know, she put Christopher decides he, she, he wants to live in it as a tenant. Then she's going to use that money to pay off the bank. Right. And then whatever other money's coming in, isn't that called passive income? Yep. Yeah. And here's another thing, okay? Um, the, mar the market goes up and down, would you agree? I mean, it goes up and down. Especially Maria, you know, because you've been in longer. But it doesn't matter if, if she's buying it high, buying it low. Uh, Christopher, Christopher's gonna be paying more and more rent and she, every year she can raise the rent, right? Yeah. Even if she buys incorrectly, she can still fix it. And and even if even if uh, real estate goes down, it doesn't matter. The market goes up. The the rental market goes up. Okay. Because people literally lose their house, move, and what do they have to do? Rent. Okay. Huge, huge. Okay. So leveraging. That's why I think leveraging is like the biggest thing. Inflation hedging. So while things are getting more expensive, this gets expensive as well. It goes right up with it. In fact, I think it goes a little higher than that. Okay. Uh, tax exemption. So it's a tax shelter, tax exemptions. Can I show you guys a quick loophole what multimillionaires do? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to show you guys in the billions just to give you an idea. Okay. 
let's just say a big company has a billion dollars, okay? Now, Maria doesn't count in, so she can tell me if I'm right or wrong, okay? But if, if that company makes a billion, if they do nothing else, they got to pay taxes on that billion, right? But what if they do this, okay? They buy some real estate, okay? So they buy a billion dollars worth of real estate, okay? Then what they could do is, so that's a huge big thing, right? Most of those expenses are done. <clears throat> then literally right away, they could do what's called a refinance, pull it out, okay? Right? And they borrow from the bank. Now, again, Maria is an accounting, so this is considered debt, right? Because now I owe the bank. So it's the same billing that I'm pulling out on the refi, but now all of a sudden, do I pay taxes, Maria, on this billing? No. Boom. Zero percent. Is that pretty crazy or what? Yes, sir. Yeah. So, it, so it's absolutely amazing what I'm showing you guys. I mean, obviously, that's on the on a huge scale, but even, a, you know, somebody making a... a a hundred thousand bucks a year, you can help them save money through taxes doing this. Okay. So taxes is big. Okay. Especially because I'm telling you, you're paying 35% up to 50% on taxes. So it's good to talk about it. Uh, small capital required, no entry and passive income. Okay. And again, theory of supply and demand, God only made so much land. Okay. Any questions on this? No. 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 I like to simplify things, you remember? <laughs> so I like to say this, as far as real estate, because I went over a bunch of ways to invest, but sell the milk, not the cow, <laughs> okay? Think about it. If you have a cow and you literally just butcher it to have a feast, yeah, you have a feast, but that's pretty much you're done, you know? If mm -hmm. you get that cow and you milk it, eventually you'll have enough money to buy another cow. Would you agree? Okay? Yes. You get that cow, now you have milk from two cows, Okay then are you going to get that third cow a lot faster? Of course, because now you have milk from two cows. Then you buy another cow, three cows, four cows, five cows. Do you see how it starts compounding faster? There, there's going to come a point, okay, where you have enough cow milk or basically rental income where you don't have to work. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So that would have never happened if you just, if you just um, butchered the cow as a flipper, you know, flipping real estate. Or if you're a licensed real estate agent, you're going to like the commissions, okay? Maria, correct me if I'm wrong, ten, fifteen thousand dollar commissions in real estate, right? That's right. Easy. And the rental part is really good too. I um that's one thing that I have um taken advantage. I I have rentals and I don't have uh to pay I live free, rent free from that. Yeah. It's funny, a few years ago I lived in a condo. It was a three bedroom. And I bought it as a foreclosure and I rented out the two rooms, you know, to other bachelors and literally the, the money I got from that rent paid for the whole thing, you know? So, so this is a way where all you guys can live for free and Maria's already doing it, you know, just to show you. All right. But basically what I'm saying on here is build your empire. Okay. Once you start learning some of these real estate skills, don't just be a real estate agent where you sell other people's cows, <laughs> right? And don't be an investor that just butchers cows to have like a good feast. You can travel and stuff, but eventually you're going to evaporate your, your food, your um, money, right? At that point. But if you have literally a whole farm, you're living off of milk and you're making way more than enough and they get more and more um, expensive, right? These cows or in, in our case, real estate. Do you guys know, understand the analogy? I know I'm, I'm talking a lot about cows. <laughs> yeah, I got you. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. All right, cool. So here's an example for the analytical people. Um, and I'll do this real quick. So if you have an asset after repair value, if it needs fixing up, it's worth 500,000. Purchase price, 350. Closing costs, realtor fees. So if you're a realtor, you get a piece of this, but 30,000. Rehab costs, 30,000. So if you get this, Minus all these to make it make that house look good and make it worth it. In this case, there's ninety thousand bucks. So there's flippers that do this, right? They do one or two of these a year, and they get to live a really good life. You guys see see how that can happen? Mm -hmm. um, but here here's the problem again. You know, taxes. The government is literally our partner. So if you do this, you're gonna pay a lot on taxes because again, Maria, you do accounting. Correct me if I'm wrong. You're paying taxes on this every single time right i also yeah when we we flipped before and that's what happened right away <laughs> oh yeah they want their money <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right mm -hmm. They're like hey i see you made ninety thousand. we want our cut right or thirty thousand. Yes. yeah so that's 
So instead of doing that, how about you keep it for income? All right, you have a gross rental income. So whatever this number is, it doesn't, honestly, it doesn't really matter, okay? Um, mortgage payment, including tax and insurance. So this minus the mortgage payment, minus property management, unless you do it yourself, and minus maintenance fees, unless you know how to fix stuff. But basically this income minus all this, whatever this is, okay? Um, it'll start growing. And here, here's the thing, okay, guys? The beautiful thing about real estate is even if you mess up, Nancy, Christopher, even if this is a zero <laughs> for whatever reason that you messed up, in a year, can you raise the rent? Of course, yeah. right? Yeah. So you can mm -hmm. fix it. In two or three years, can you refinance the, the mortgage and lower your payment? Yeah, mm, yes. of course. So over time, you're basically doing this to your cash flow, okay? And you're doing this to your equity. So it's never going to be the same. If, in fact, I'm telling you, even if you mess up, <laughs> it's better than nothing. And you're going to see, see that right, oops, right here. So literally, I, in my opinion, you can't really mess up. It's very hard to mess up in real estate, okay? <clears throat> very hard, okay? The only way I would say to mess up is if you buy something, for whatever reason, you can't rent it out, or you didn't have the money to fix it up, so it's, you can't rent it out, so then you have to pay out of your pocket, and then you run out of money. That's really the only way you can mess it up, okay? So, let me see. Here's putting it all together, okay? Real estate, mortgages, insurance. We do all three, okay? Let's just say you bought a house. Again, same example, 500000 You put 10% down, which is worst case scenario, 50000 and the market goes up, okay? The market goes up 6.9%. You're doing the same thing in the insurance policy. Here's what's cool. Within one year, you'll know if it's a good deal because um, let's just say the market went up, and so in equity, you made 34000 bucks. If you put in fifty. And you got 34, isn't that 69% on your cash on cash return? Mm -hmm. Of course. So that already is amazing. People do that all the time. In fact, the way uh, my mom, when she started in uh, real estate, she did it big in, uh, in new homes, brand new homes being built. They do it in phases. So she would buy in phase one. And then by the time they get into phase four, it already made money. Maria, did you ever do that or know of people that did that? Uh, but I'm experiencing one of my sales. Uh, I just sold the house in phase one, but uh, we went back and now they're, I think they're working on phase three. Prices went up. Yeah. Prices went up so much and I'm, I was shocked. I never <laughs> dealt with new construction before. This is actually the first time I deal with it. Yeah, there's good and bad for uh, for new construction. So. Mm -hmm. I, I think it's all fun, to be honest with you. I just love love talking about this. So anyway, benefits, appreciation, taxes, rental income. But here, we're talking about retirement, tying it back all together, okay? In 30 years, this property is going to be worth, if it stays consistent, $1.5 million, okay? Don't believe me. Go back 30 years, look at properties, or talk to your grandma and grandpa and ask them how much they paid for their property. Then yeah. look at what it's worth, okay? I don't know, Maria, if you've ever done that or, or, or Luis. But that's pretty much just so you can believe, okay? So this $500,000 property went to 1.5. That alone is pretty good. The mortgage, hopefully, if you don't over leverage yourself, you'll pay it off, right? So you don't have any more payments. And then the insurance policy, you still have 900,000 bucks in coverage. Um, in, the, in the account, you'll have, in this case, 567,000, assuming the, on my brothers, but everyone's different on this one. But what's 1.5 million bucks plus 500? Anybody? What's 1.5 million plus 567,000? I'm circling it, guys. I'm making it really easy for you. Oh, yeah. million. Yeah. Two million, right? In this case. Literally, guys, with one property um, and one insurance policy, how long does it take? I mean, a month on the house, a week on the policy. And yet it, we took them a whole, this client, a whole nother path and we got in 2 million. Now what's better? Remember in the beginning when I said somebody set aside 250 bucks and started saving up, they have 200,000. So what's easier, 200,000 or this at 2 million? What's better? <laughs> Nobody? <Yeah. laughs> it's an easy answer, guys. Mm -hmm. uh, the 2 million is obviously way better. On top of that, let me, let me tell you the huge thing, okay? In the first example, they contributed themselves 250 bucks. On this real estate, if this was Nancy, can she rent it out 
uh, the tenants would pay for the mortgage and then that extra cash flow, can that pay for the policy too? Yes. So how much money out of Nancy's pocket is she paying every month for the 30 years? Nothing. Nothing. Because the tenants were paying for it. Oh, right, right. All right. So that alone, I mean, either me paying 250 or me paying zero and having 2 million, I'd rather get the 2 million and not paying anything. Okay. On top of that, you're, you're putting your clients into a way better position. Okay. If you're in this position, when you have $2 million that you literally have access to this client, um, you're putting them in a position where this house, what they can do is they can either just keep cash flowing. They put tenants in it. Now they can cash flow three, 4,000 bucks a month. That's their retirement. Would you agree? That and this one gives them a retirement. Or second thing they could do is they can sell their house, sell the policy if they really wanted to, put it into annuity and live for the rest of their life. Does that make sense? Now they don't have to deal with the real estate. So literally now you're giving them different options, right? Mm -hmm. And by the way, this is one, one property. Can, what, if, what if you did two, three, five, ten? 10? What if Nancy had 10 of these properties? 2 million times 10 is a lot. 20 million, <laughs> right? Yeah. So are we completely changing people's lives? Of course, you know? That's why we, we show people from an entirely different perspective. Maria, have you ever seen anybody present it this way? No, oh, I haven't. Oh, man, it's completely different. And she's an agent, by the way, guys. She's mm -hmm. looking at, I invited her here. So she can see what we do differently and hopefully she'll make the decision of joining us so she can present it this way. And we already have all the umbrellas and we can get everyone paid and all that stuff. Okay. So here's some of the executive team. We have a couple of VPs and in the insurance. <coughs> That's me in the real estate. Uh, we have Ruben Mata. He's in charge of the outreach and the nonprofit. So we actually have a nonprofit that we have and that's going to be big on the real estate side. So I don't want to confuse you guys, but it's going to be huge. Okay. And then we have Leticia, Jeff Converse. He does another type of alternative investments for our clients. So that's huge. And then we have Norman here doing the PNC. Okay. All right. Now let's get into the company. Okay. But do you guys like what we show, show clients? Is that pretty powerful? Yes, sir. I think it yeah. is. Yeah. If literally, guys, even if you walked away from, from today and just utilize what I told you about, you'd become multimillionaires. I mean, that's yes, pretty amazing what we teach. You know, you can do your own thing and do this just because you have this knowledge that I just gave you. Is that pretty powerful? Yes, sir. This yes. is why, yeah, this is why people pay 2,000, 5,000 bucks for this type of knowledge. You know, I've, I've gone to real estate, like investment courses through Rich Dad, Poor Dad, Robert Kiyosaki, um, some of the other courses that I've paid like 30,000 bucks to learn some of these things I'm teaching you. And I simplify it, you know? So we make it very easy. We just want to make sure, you know, if I make start making more money, I want you guys to start making more money. So then I start giving you that knowledge too. Just don't take it for granted, right? Maria, don't tell people this, okay? <laughs> no, I, I just, I know what you're saying is true. I mean, the I've been to a few of those courses and I know that you paid a lot of money for the, I mean, they're expensive. Mm -hmm. yeah, very expensive. Nobody wants to share any knowledge unless, you know, what, what do they have, right? For me, you know what? I don't care. I want people out of that nine, what is it? 95%, the 63%, 25. And I want all of us to make money. There's no reason. Literally, that's why people are getting richer and richer. They're just buying more assets. Now you, now you guys understand throughout mm -hmm. your whole working life, if you don't buy any assets, you know, don't blame anybody else for you being in that position, you know? All right. So a little bit about our umbrella company. We have four main divisions plus our nonprofit. And, Here's the thing, and Maria can attest to this, okay? Um, Luis, are you still there? I haven't heard from you. Luis? You down here? Down here. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Just to make sure that, you know, everybody's there. All right. We have these four divisions, okay? Real estate, mortgages, insurance, and investments, okay? And here's the thing. If somebody's not licensed, you know, technically, we can't pay over whatever the regulation is. So, for example, the Department of Real Estate regulates real estate, obviously, right? And the most we can pay somebody that's not licensed is $250, okay? It's either $250 or $500. I've seen both, you know, sides of it when I was doing research on it. <clears throat> but let's just say it's $500. The most somebody can get paid technically when they're not licensed is $500, okay? Uh, make sense, everybody? Yes, sir. And you guys have heard of that, right? Uh, yes. Uh, like Maria? Yes. In mortgages, it's $25, which, you know, sucks because it's so low. But in mortgages, it's $25. <laughs> 
normally loan officers will give like a $25 gift card or something like that to somebody that referred a client. In insurance, I has still haven't found anything. So I can't say anything about that one. And then investments, it's the only one that has like the gray area where you don't really need a license to get paid. And there's no, it's not regulated as, you know, the same, okay? <clears throat> so what we did to kind of fix this, because we want to make sure everybody gets paid, but at the same time, we don't, if we get audited, we don't get in trouble because there's a lot of, like there's huge fines in real estate. If we pay somebody, you know, over that, especially multiple times, um, they'll find us like five, ten thousand dollars, fifteen thousand bucks. I mean, the fines are, are pretty big because we make more money. Oh, and yeah. so, in order to get around that and stay legal, what we did is we created a, a rewards point system. Okay. So, the way it works is if somebody refers a client, we close the deal. It's a thousand points in real estate, uh, 200, 750 points for mortgages, 250 points for insurance, and then 1,750 points in investments. Make sense so far? Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so, and by the way, for everybody this year, the Market Associates, uh, we're doubling the points, okay? So right now you actually get 2,000 points in real estate, whatever double of 750 is. So it's, it's all doubled right now. And you'll see how that makes a huge difference. So there's three things that you can do to convert the rewards points. The first one is towards real estate, okay? So referring clients and then we get you real estate. Is that pretty good? Okay, and we get you passive income real estate. So that way you don't have to work. That alone is amazing, okay? Next one is towards a stipend. So that's a salary of the monthly monthly allowance. And then the third one is towards advanced bonuses, okay? So for example, Maria has a real estate license, but she doesn't have her mortgage or life. So if she refers a client, they get all three or they refer she refers clients in the other two regardless. What we do is we accumulate the points. We show, we can see that she's working. And what we do is we give her a cash advance through the real estate division. And so the cash advance is paid and then we just kind of negate what, what she got on the points, subtract. Make sense? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So let me give you a quick example. Let's just say you refer three clients and you're not licensed <coughs> and we helped them get a house. So that's a thousand points on single family. We helped them get a mortgage, which those two pretty much go together anyway. 750, uh, we helped her get the life insurance policy. 250, uh, we also do disability insurance, home insurance, auto insurance. So let's add those up, 250. So that's 2,700 points. By the way, um, there's a lot of, lot of times uncles, aunts, you know, other family members live in that household. So we normally go even above and beyond, but let's just say worst case scenario, okay? Just one. <coughs> 2,700 points times three clients, that's 8,200 points, okay? To make it easy, each point equals $1. Okay, so in this case, you would have $8,200 worth of credit towards real estate through escrow. Okay, so the loophole that we're utilizing on this one is if Nancy wants to buy a house, okay, in escrow, I can give up to 100% of my own commission. Okay, that is completely legal. Outside of escrow, I just can't pay your 8,000 cash. That's illegal. Makes sense? So in order to keep it legal, we keep it in escrow and we give her that. That's the loophole we're exploiting. Make sense? Yeah. So my question is, Nancy, what's easier, referring three clients or saving up 8,000 bucks to buy a house? Referring three clients. Bam. Is anybody getting excited about any of this? Yes, sir. Yeah, sounds okay. good. Every time I go through this, I get excited. <laughs> I feel like I'm, I'm like constantly recruiting myself. It's kind of funny. Okay. By the way, <laughs> didn't I say that we doubled the points this year? Yeah. Yes. Instead of 8,000, did I not just give you 16,000? Mm -hmm. yeah now that's a lot easier right maria have you ever seen anything, anything like this no i'm i'm no i haven't <laughs> it's a beautiful thing okay now maria yeah. even if this is the cool part about us okay even if you stay with your your broker right now okay because i know the type of uh of scenario we're in uh mm -hmm. you can stay there you just wouldn't get points on real estate but then you'd get the commission anyway and we can still accumulate accumulate the points on the mortgages and the insurance and then you in particular, I mean, you can either use it towards real estate or you can do this. You can save up the points and hit a, hit this to get the compensation of the salary. Okay. So this is the way it works. 12,000 points. I just showed Nancy how to get 16,000. So you'd hit that one pretty easily. So when you hit 12,000 points, what we're going to do is the umbrella company, Wealth Legacy Group, is going to pay you a salary of a thousand bucks a month in this case for the next 12 months. Okay. If you hit 25,000 points, it's 2,000 a month. 
50,000 points, you become a regional executive, 4,000 a month. And then vice president is 100,000 points, 8,000 bucks a month. Okay. Now, I want to be very clear because I had showed this last week and, and this girl, she said, okay, so, and she was excited, but she said, okay, so I have to do these points every month. And I said, no, no, no. As soon as you hit these points, I'm going to give you a thousand a month for the next 12 months, whether you do anything or not the rest of the 11 months. You guys understand? Like I'm yeah. literally paying you a marketing salary, like a, a salary, district manager, regional executive vice president. Because you showed me by hitting these points, you're showing me that you're working. Does that make sense? Here's another thing, okay? And the reason why we do it, okay? And again, Maria, I love that you're in the accounting, so you can say no, yes, okay? We're doing this for multiple reasons, okay? Superior Properties Group is the brokerage that's actually paying the commissions, doing all that. The reason why Wealth Legacy Group is the, the one actually paying the salary, it's completely separate. So even if the real estate uh, company gets audited, um, you're not even get, getting paid from that company anyway, so it wouldn't even show. But even if they audited this company as well, what's happening is if I'm paying, let's say Nancy, 4,000 bucks a month every month, is this tied to any transaction? If I'm paying this for the next 12 months? No. No? no. They're just seeing that Nancy's on the roster getting paid. Mm -hmm. Makes sense? So this is how I want to make sure that you guys understand how we're, we're completely unique. Nobody's doing this. But, and at the same time, we're being legal because there's a lot of people that they're, they work inside of the gray areas, but they do it in the wrong way. And they open themselves up to being sued and audits and all that stuff. We've been audited a couple of times and we've been fine because of the way we structure things. Make sense? <coughs> all right. Is this pretty exciting, Luis? I haven't heard from you. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. Okay. All right. And as a member... What makes us different is we provide lead scripts and you get to set appointments as a marketing associate and you assist the licensed personnel. Okay. So here's the exciting thing for both parties here. Okay. Christopher and Nancy, you don't have your license yet, right? Your real estate license. Yeah. So then mm -hmm. while you're learning how to be a real estate agent, you're doing some of these things. You get to earn a salary, start making money on all the other divisions and you're being mentored by, in this case, let's just say it's Luis and Maria because they do have their license. And so you're doing them a favor because, you know, you're putting in the time to do the work on sending the appointments. You're getting that. And then they're literally using their license, right? Going out there and meeting with clients. So do you see how it's a win-win scenario? Yeah. On that? All the way around. Okay. Um, and for the new people, I can't wait to show you the real estate comp plan. It's amazing. Okay. This, believe it or not, this is actually the small money. And I'm Maria can tell you, Maria and Luis. This is the small money. That's amazing. Okay. So here's, here's the marketing strategy. The risk, the marketing associate builds rapport and trust with the client. And then the license agent that comes in, he's the expert. Okay. A lot of people do this in companies. It's called the triangle defense. And uh, there's, there's companies that do this just with a warm market. Okay. Like for example, marketing associate would talk to friends and family, their warm market, and then bring in the license agent which is good. That's the easiest and fastest way to make money. But the reason why that's not the only way I like to make money is because I feel like they're, they're burning through the warm market, you know, in those companies. Okay. I'd rather teach all all four of you guys how to get the lead, uh, call them, market to them and get, get deals without talking to friends and family. That way, by the time you talk to friends and family, Hey, I, I just closed the deal, made five, 10 grand and and helped you know somebody buy a house and they're like oh really and then you help them you know instead of trying to convince your friends and family make sense mm -hmm. okay so and all we need by the way from a market associate is an intake form it's just a one pager that you know gives us some information on the client okay <clears throat> then the licensed agent basically takes over and um and goes over to the listing listing appointment and you can go to so that way you can learn in fact i highly recommend you go to those appointments so that way you know exactly what's said exactly what's going on okay so remember in the beginning i said you know where are you going to be in the next five years and i just showed you guys how we help uh clients with tax-free retirement income utilizing insurance contracts is that pretty good mm -hmm. create monthly yes. income utilizing real estate i think a couple of you guys wanted to have that anyway and you can invest with literally no market exposure. Is that pretty good? Mm -hmm. So we're doing obviously something way different than most companies. 
the next step, uh, again, this is the client presentation. What I tell them is I have a presentation survey. Let me know what you're interested in. Um, and then they let me know uh, whether they're more interested in doing some uh, personalized retirement plan, real estate, mortgage, insurance, or the business opportunity. Okay. And so it's very easy. Um, they tell us exactly what they want. In my opinion, there's really no selling because they tell me exactly what they want. <laughs> they tell me what they want to buy. Right. All right. Now, any questions? No, sir. No. Not right now. No. Is anybody else excited? Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes, sir. Maria, I want to hear from you. You have a lot of the background. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really impressed with everything that I hear. I'm, I'm just following. I'm I'm very impressed with this presentation. In fact, Maria, uh, hopefully you don't mind, Maria. We, we actually, uh, some of the other brokers met with Maria and um, this other person that's, that's running the nonprofit because Maria actually has some, some, uh, some experience in the nonprofit world, right, Maria? Yes. So she has her license, accounting, that. So with Maria, we're going to do some things on the nonprofit. I don't actually have it on the presentation yet because I want to situate things first. But um, if you guys, if Maria doesn't mind, maybe I'll tell you a real quick thing. I think Luis will really like this. Okay. You guys mind if I, if I, or Maria, you mind if I tell them our little no. plan? <laughs> oh, <go> right ahead. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. Let me tell you something powerful that no, literally no other brokerage is, is, is going to have against us. Okay. We're going to have a direct line to HUD, which is like the government part of like after the foreclosures. So HUD stands for housing, urban development. And so we're going to have, two agreements with them. We're going to have one from the brokerage to be able to sell those homes, which is good. But also our nonprofit, which is hopefully what Maria is going to help us with. Uh, we're going to be able to send biddings to the HUD homes. And because we're going to be in, we're a nonprofit already, but we'll do it to the nonprofit. We're going to be able to get homes at about 50% on the dollar. Okay. Which is going to be huge. There's going to be commissions to be made for people that are licensed and then on the investment division, our investment division or investors that work with us are going to be able to get property and profits. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. So, yeah. so it's going to make things like, you know, very, very easy. Um, almost like, like taking candy from a baby kind of thing. You guys have probably heard. <laughs> mm -hmm. you know? Literally no competition. Same thing. We're thinking about getting, um, getting, going with different banks and becoming REO agent as well from the brokerage so for example like uh, bank of america wells fargo they have a certain amount of property that they foreclosed on already so our job as agents would be to go get the contracts to clean it up and then sell it so then we would have exclusive contracts so we're thinking about that one but the one that's going to be very easy is this non-profit one we already have some of the structure involved so is that pretty good is that going to put a lot of money in all your guys' pockets, Nancy, Christopher, Luis? Yes, sir. All right. So you guys don't have any questions? Not yet. Not right now. No. All right. Well, either I did a really good job at explaining it or you guys don't just don't want to tell me <laughs> or ask questions. I don't know which one it is. Okay. All right. Well, with all you guys, with, uh, with Nancy, uh, let me talk to you first because I know you applied for the broker assistant. So I'll talk to you first. Christopher, if you like this, send me an email and I'll send you the DocuSign for the Marketing Associate side and get you going on it. And then I'll give you the login access in the back once you sign all the paperwork. Uh, for all of you guys, our, our team meetings are Tuesdays and Thursdays in the morning at 10 a.m. So I'll add all of your guys' emails to that um, if it's a yes. If you tell me for whatever reason, hey, you know, I have something better or whatever, then let me know and then I just won't put you on, the, on that calendar, okay? Uh, Luis, I think you already joined us, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you, yeah. Luis just moved over his license yesterday. So we're going to do something. By the way, Luis, um, on the part, I forgot to, to bring you up and talk to you. I know you have your PNC license. So I think now that you kind of see what's going on, do you see how we can fit that in as well? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay, perfect. And then Maria, let us know on the, well, the nonprofit for sure. I know you were going to digest that. Uh, now that you see everything we're doing with the company, now you have a way better idea of what we're doing, right? Yes, definitely. Yeah. Thank you, Ernest. Um, thank you so much for inviting me to this meeting. I really appreciate you. 
Yeah, no problem. And then uh, last thing, I have this recorded, so I'll stop it. I'll send it to all you guys that way in case, because I know I went over a lot of information. I mean, yeah. this is really what the wealthy do. So to go through it, you know, within an hour, mm -hmm. it's, you know, for you to really digest it. I had to, not, not to call myself too dumb, but I had to see a, a really dumbed down, just real estate presentation. I had to see it like three or four times because it was way over my head. So if you guys didn't get it, that's maybe that's why you don't have questions. Uh, don't feel bad. I mean, sometimes when you're learning something new, you got to see it a few times, you know, so don't feel bad about it. All right. All right. Great. So again, Maria, let me know on that on both sides, the, the, the nonprofit and <coughs> with your license side, see how we can do things. Louise, Definitely. welcome aboard. What was that? Definitely. Thank you so much, Ernest. And um, good luck to each one of you guys. Uh, Nancy, good luck. Thank um, you. Awesome. Yeah, this is this this was awesome. I, it really blew my mind. I, I mean, there was so much information, great information. Thank you, guys. So, um, I, I like to blow people's minds. That's good. I like to hear that. <laughs> this was good. All right. Okay, perfect. guys. Thank you. Appreciate you. Thank you, Ernest. Bye. Bye. Okay. Bye, -bye. <laughs> so again, I'll talk to you, Nancy, and then Christopher. Okay. Let me know. Send me an email. Okay. And then also, uh, what do you want me to send you an email again? Just if I wanna, if I wanna. Well, if, let me know if you're in, and then I'll send you an email with the DocuSign. Oh, I'll tell you now. I'm in. <laughs> okay, perfect, man. Welcome aboard. <laughs> so I'll send you that, and then we'll we'll talk. Uh, I'll give All you a right. call too. Okay. All right, man. Nancy, no no questions for me. Says that. Uh, no, no no questions. Can I call you in a little bit then? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Perfect. Okay. And then Luis, I think you're good to go. We just need to talk about the PNC. Okay. Yeah, no problem. Okay. Yeah. All right, guys. Thank you guys for joining. I'll send you the recording, okay? Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Bye.